use it. So one of the key principles here, which we've got here as number two, is the limitation on purpose. And again, common sense and ethical, right? If I ask you for personal information about your household, about your demographics, about your behaviors, product usage, whatever it is, I need to be clear about how I'm going to be using that data. It's not okay for me to collect that data right now for this purpose, and then three months later, use it for a different purpose or resell that data or somehow have some other business benefit by recycling or repurposing that data. If I'm collecting somebody's personal information, I'm collecting it for a specific purpose, and I that doesn't give me the right to just continue to use that data over time. So again, a, an important parameter to be aware of, but also kind of common sense. Um, another thing that is important when we're looking at all of these things about GDPR, so we've got transparency, purpose, storage limitation, data minimization, integrity and confidentiality, accuracy. Another thing as we look at all of these things is that they are also very similar to the regulations that are in the CCPA, which is the California Consumer Protection Act. Um, excuse me, actually, it's the California Consumer Privacy Act, the California Consumer Privacy Act. And CCPA has gotten a lot of press in the United States over the last few years, because not only did California enact this, and again, it's very similar to GDPR, but a lot of other states have since said that they are adopting the same type of, the same regulation or similar, similar regulations. And so a number of states have already either adopted CCPA-like regulations or they're in the process of doing so. So New York, New Hampshire, Virginia, Illinois, a number of states are either already doing it or are about to do it. Um, so it is something that's going to apply pretty broadly in the United States. Now, the question I often get from students is, but I'm not in California, so does CCPA apply to me? If you're collecting data from citizens of California, yes. It doesn't matter if your company is based in Kansas. Um, it doesn't matter if your company is based in South Dakota. If you are collecting data from people who are citizens of California, then CCPA does apply to you. So I wanna clear that uh, misunderstanding up right away. Now, the one thing that is a little tricky about all of this is that there are also modifications that happen. I think a lot of states are somewhat challenged because technology changes, new information about how personal information gets used and abused comes to light. And so the regulations do get changed. So for example, in January of 2023, California did publish some um, uh, additional Re re regulatory details um, that are sort of an, uh, an extension of CCPA. So keeping up with these things does require a little bit of vigilance, uh, periodic checking and refreshing. Now for most market research professionals, being aware of GDPR and CCPA are, is certainly important. You should know what these things are. If you are working in a market research agency or, um, or an organization that any organization that's collecting market research data, um, certainly it is a good idea to periodically refresh and make sure that you are in compliance. But again, if you look at what the compliance requirements are, most of them are really very much common sense. Of course, as you talk about regulatory requirements, especially for market researchers who are collecting a lot of consumer data from across state lines or in Europe, uh, always wise to consult with your legal team, um, consult with a lawyer who understands these issues because again, they can be complex. If you have any questions, do let us know and I hope you enjoy the job aid. Thanks.